Hey guys, this is Sharon with the Grouchy Goblin. Good morning to you. How's everybody doing today? I am getting ready to paint our sock monkey here. Let me get everything going for our live this morning. <clears throat> if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up and let me know that you're with me today. And we'll go ahead and get started. This is... Um, this is my template that I created last year, and this template has gotten um, um, a lot of activity. A lot of people really have commented and they like this template. When um, when we created this template last year, we um, were looking for a sock monkey template from somebody else, and we couldn't find anything. Um, so we decided, why don't we just make our own? And um, so my husband and I came up with the design ourselves and he turned out super super cute and so we're going to paint him today okay I'm going to set the original off to the side so I can kind of see it and we'll get started with our template so I cut this one out this one's um, a little bit larger than the template that you get in our shop because I needed this for a specific project but um, it's this exact same template I just made it a little bit bigger and um, I painted it white to begin with because, um, like I've said before, if you go ahead and just paint your entire blank, uh, um, your wood blank white, then the colors that you put on top of it are really going to pop out and um, you will have to do less coats that way. So I went ahead, I want to show you that I went ahead and painted that white. And... This is my paper template put together. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my carbon paper like we normally do. Slide it up under here with this hat, and we're going to draw in the major pieces that we're going to start with. So for this guy, and I feel like we can get him done um, without it being a two-parter. We're just going to kind of play it by ear and see how it goes, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and draw in um, the big details of the hat just to know where my colors start and stop and I'm just tracing in the middle of my black line so when I lift that up you can if the camera will focus in on it you can see those lines there and I'm gonna slide this down as I'm working my piece so I'm not gonna draw in the ear details yet because um, we're gonna actually um, paint the paint it the solid brown to begin with. I'm just going to paint in, or excuse me, I'm just going to draw in the big pieces. The mouth, the hat. So that I can paint the brown all around. Oops. I want to make sure I can see that really well. I missed the part right here. For my template, I'm drawing through the eyes just to continue the circle. When you paint over that black, you're not going to see that, but for now, that'll help me with the mouth. And then I'm going to slide them down so you can see what I'm doing down here. And I'm going to go ahead, make sure that template's lined back up as I'm moving my carbon paper. I'm going to do this section of the tail, and I'm going to slide down here and do the arms and the feet. Let me see if I can move that back just a little so you can see. All right. And I want to make sure this is lined up good. Okay. So I'm going to just draw out the hands here, and I'm hitting tape, so let me move that over just a little bit. Take a peek, yep, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Throwing out the hands, because those are white, and I'm not going to paint brown. I'm not going to paint the whole thing brown and then paint white over it. It'll be too hard to cover, especially the darker brown. So, we'll get that on. We're not going to draw the heart yet. We'll come back and do that later. 
We'll move this out of the way. And we will be referencing that again. So I'm going to pull this down here so you can see. And we're going to start up here at the top. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. There we go. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of water on my brush. And I'm going to start up here with the red. And I'm just going to paint the top of the hat. And I'm using the edge of my brush as my straight line, just dragging it across. And while you're at it, make sure you go ahead and paint the sides so you don't have to come back and do that again. All right. Now this section of his hat is white, so I'm going to leave that and I come down here and I'm going to do this portion of the hat red. And I went up a little too high, but that's okay. I'm going to turn it so I can see better. Smooth this out a little bit. There we go. And then we're going to do the bottom portion as well. Then I come back in and just kind of smooth out that line there in the middle. And we may have to put two coats on here. We're just going to wait and see how it dries. You don't want any of your white showing through the back. Okay. And then we're going to come in and, um, you know, I should have drawn that piece there. So let me do this. Let me rinse out this brush a little bit. Let me hit this with a hair dryer just to dry out this piece. Bear with me just a sec. Get when you're drying, you want to make sure that you're using a cool, a cool setting, not the hot. The hot could, could potentially make your paint crack. So I wanted to make sure that was dry so I can put this back on here real quick. I don't want that red smeared into my white hat. So I drew out of the outside of the nose and mouth area, but I forgot to draw this part in right here. And that's important <clears throat> because that is also red. And so I want to make sure my template's lined up right. You don't want his mouth to be crooked. And I'm going to draw this piece in here. And this morning I'm having a hard time drawing a straight line for some reason. So, another good reason to have a template handy. So, now we have our mouth in here. And now, I can go ahead and paint that red also. So, I'm going to dip my brush back in my red paint. And I'm going to turn this so that I can see this angle better. Okay. I'm just going to come in here. And using the straight edge of my brush... And pull that across and I know I'm gonna have to add a second coat because I can really see the white through this part and it may be because there's too much water on my brush so we'll go ahead and get this painted in 
If you find that you go too wide on your mouth or you go outside the lines and you don't like that, instead of trying to smooth it out with the red, let it dry or hit it with a hair dryer and then go back over that part with white. Otherwise your mouth will just keep getting larger and larger and larger. And nobody wants a big mouth. All right, so I'm gonna come around here and I'm just gonna kind of turn my brush as I'm painting that line. It's gonna help that smooth out that corner. I don't want a, a straight point in the corner. I want it to be rounded. So I'm going to go around it again and just pull straight down. Just like so. And I think, I think I sent out colors for you this week. If you're on our email list, Make sure you sign up for our email at our website, www.thegrouchygoblin.com. Um, I will send out an email each week with what we're going to paint and the colors that you need. I try to get it out on Facebook too, but with our crazy schedule right now, sometimes I'm forgetting. I'm dropping balls like a boss. So, but it will definitely be in our newsletter. So if you go out there and sign up for our newsletter, you won't miss anything. All right, so I got his mouth in there, and I'm going to go ahead and put the second coat on this since it's dry, since I hit it with a hair dryer, and that way I won't have to come back and do that. If you go over your... Um, Graphite lines just a little bit. Don't worry about it. Use your paint pen to cover that up as you're drawing in the highlights at the end, okay? It does not have to be perfect. I'll turn him this way <clears throat> so I can get this side a little bit easier. Right up against that line. And again, making sure I paint my sides. All right. Now that this has had a few minutes, I'm going to go around this edge again. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to turn my brush. Just like so. For those who are interested, this is Anita Red. It's just um, Anita's uh, True Red, actually. Any color red will work. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush out real quick. And then we're going to get started on the brown. And the brown that I'm using, let's see, what did I pick? Um, I went to Hobby Lobby. I, as you can see, I'm not... Um, um, what's the right word? I'm not particular to one kind of paint brand. I, I just pick whatever color I like and go with it. And um, I was at Hobby Lobby this week, so I picked up an assortment of different brands, which is kind of a pain for the cashier, but sorry, lady. 
So um, this week, or this for this particular brown, I'm using mushroom uh, champagne, it looks like, and it's from Full Guard. And I went ahead and put some on my palette. I'll turn this guy back around this way. And just going to paint his face on. And I'm using a half inch flat tip brush. Um, you can use um, probably a one inch brush and do this a little bit faster. But I feel like I have more control over the half inch, especially when I'm getting up against lines like this. So I would say just use what you're comfortable with. And you want to load up your brush a good bit with this brown because you're going to do a lot of coverage with this particular color. I'm going to paint the ears. Remember, I said always keep your, your wet wipes handy because if you're like me, you'll always stick your hand in wet paint. So, get that right off. I don't want that showing up in my white areas. Okay, so I'm just going to fill in with the brown here. And there's going to be places on with this particular color that I might need a second coat or touch up as well. But I'm just going to try to get the first coat on. So you get the gist. And I'm going to, let's see. I'm not going to turn it yet. I'm just going to turn it. Notice I'm sticking my pinky out as I'm drawing my line. I'm pulling my wrist straight down, and I'm sticking my pinky out to help guide. That'll help you keep a straight line as you're working your way around the white portion of his face. Um, I'm going to come over on this side. I'm just going to pull my paint around. And you want to go a little slower around the edge here. Using the edge of that brush right up against your paint, right up against your graphite line. That's going to help you keep those lines straight, okay? Do a little bit here. And you can also turn your brush from flat tip to straight up and down. If you do that, it will give you a straight line to help get those tight areas. Okay. And come down here. And now for this part, after I get around the space here, I'm going to switch to a bigger brush. slow around his face. Like 
There we go. All right. And you can see how he starts to come together. You can see there's some light areas. I'm going to have to go back and add a second coat there, and I will do that in just a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and get the body of him going. So I've switched to a bigger brush now because I can cover this so much faster with a bigger brush. And I want to take long brush strokes. Your long brush strokes are going to help um, make sure there's no brush lines in your paint. Gives it a smoother finish. And you're going to use a lot of brown on this guy. I feel like my brush is dragging just a little bit, not moving as smooth. So I just put a little water on my brush, then go back in and load it up again. And that little bit of water helped move that paint a little bit more. Give you a little more coverage. You don't want it too wet. Just enough. Okay. For the tail. Remember my tail on my original is white, so I'm, I'm just going to cut it across here using my brush again as my straight edge. And painting my sides. And go ahead and carry this into my body. I have a friend that's having a baby and the end of September. So um, she doesn't know, but she's going to get this as a, as a surprise. So hopefully she's not watching today. Got a little gook, a little thick paint there. Um, so I'm hoping that I can get this personalized and make it super cute and she'll be surprised. She loves all things um, kind of old and, um, I don't know the right word, antique-ish, vintage. Vintage is the right word I'm looking for. She likes the vintage things. And so I thought this would be a super cute thing to give her for her baby. Room decor or even to put on the door as an announcement to friends and family. So, put a little more water on my brush. This, these bigger brushes, it's hard to load them up with paint and then not drag if your brush is dry. So you wanna make sure that there's plenty of water on your brush. <clears throat> and you'll see I'm kinda of going around the edges here where this is where the white of his hands are. So I don't want to, um, I really don't want to get brown in that area and have to try to paint over it white. You can, but it's a little tricky. It just takes a little longer, a couple more coats. So we're trying to avoid that. The first time I painted this, I painted the whole thing brown. And then it took a lot longer to go back in and put the details in because brown's hard to cover. So, and like I said, these big brushes make it a little more challenging to get in those smaller areas. So if you have a smaller brush and you can flip back and forth and you want to do that, that's what I would recommend. I always keep multiple brushes handy. So I can just grab what feels comfortable. If 
if you're painting today or um, this weekend, let me know what you're working on. Show me what you're working on. We have a, obviously we have a Facebook group. Hopefully you're coming to me live from there. And um, I'd love to see, I'd love people to share what they're working on. Help inspire the rest of us. Only positive comments will be allowed. If you don't like it, you have to keep scrolling. So it's a safe place for you to share. He's so cute. Let me get this edge over here. I'm going to go ahead and put my second coat on the face while I'm working up here, getting these edges done. Because you, I, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but, well, yeah, you can kind of see it on the camera. There's some light areas. So go ahead and add a second coat. You don't want any white showing through. Went ahead and putting on my second coat up here while this side dries. If you kind of work systematically, you can this this paint dries so fast. You can work on one section while the other is drying. Makes it handy for time's sake. And I missed my edges over here. So I want to keep my long strokes where I can to keep that smooth with no paintbrush lines. And if you're painting, if you're painting your own door hangers, whether it's the sock monkey or something different, what kind of wood are you using? Because um, I have always used the Revolutionary Ply. Uh, it's five millimeter, quarter inch Revolutionary Ply. But this weekend, I tried the MDF. And I'm curious if, uh, for my painters that have been doing this a while, which ones are you using? Have you found that you like one over the other? I just started with the ply and I just kind of stuck with it. And now that I've tried the MDF, I found that um, I really like the smoothness. Um, I'm working on my first one, my first door hanger with the MDF, and um, it's just so much smoother. And so I'm trying to debate, do I leave what I'm comfortable with for this new stuff? Some folks said that um, I was reading up on it a little bit before I tried it, and 
they said that the um, sometimes you have to paint multiple coats, but I'm having to do that with uh, the Revolutionary Ply too. So I'm not necessarily convinced that the woods the wood is that much different. But that MDF is very very smooth to cut and to um, to paint on. So I may have to do a couple more. I'd be interested in what you're doing. What's your favorite and why? What are what are the pros and cons? So I'm loading up that brush really, really good as I make these long strokes across. And I feel my brush is dragging a little bit, so I keep dipping it in the water. I really think it's the, large, the size of this brush. All right, now we're getting some good coverage. I'll do the second coat on his tail. Come down here and do the second coat on this bottom. Make sure I'm on screen so you can see. And I'm using the edge of my brush to keep that line straight. Stuck my hand in wet paint again. I'm turning my brush with my hand in that curve there. A little more water. Where did that red come from? Take that brown and just hit it again if you get a little bit of red in there. Hmm. <laughs> I'm looking everywhere. I must have touched it somewhere. That's all right. You can smooth it right on out. Just hit it while it's still wet. With the brown, you'll be fine. All right. Now, he's got a good solid two coats on him. And he is, um, let's see. Let me do one more on that mouth red, and then we'll go ahead and start working on his heart, his little heart, and his eyes. So I'm going to switch back over to my smaller brush because, like I said, it's just my favorite. And it's a flat tip brush. I'm just going to kind of come in here. I really want this mouth to be solid red, no white showing through. So I'm just going to do a quick coat again in here. Now that's good and dark. And I'm going to go ahead and touch up right there. Okay, now, because I painted the background white to begin with, you may not have to. If you paint yours white, you may not have to. Um, 
paint the hat part white, the mouth part white, and the feet and hands white. But I'm going to go ahead and put one more coat on it because I painted it white several days ago and um, I didn't put two coats on. I really just kind of put one for the base coating. So I'm going to go ahead and I just want this to be crisp and white. So I'm just going to add one more coat here. And I'm just dragging my brush across. Keeping, I'm not, I'm not bending my wrist. I'm keeping my arm straight. Pulling it straight across. That helps me keep my line straight. Okay. And if you hit a little bit of white in that red, just hit it with your wet wipe. Okay. <clears throat> wet wipes are handy. They fix everything, especially if you do it quick. You can wipe most everything right up, except for paint pens. Doesn't work on paint pens, just the paint, acrylic paint. Okay. I'm going to go around here. Because that's wet, I'm still, i got to be real careful. Um, I would recommend letting yours dry. For time's sake, I'm just moving along. Um, but you want to make sure that you don't pick up any of that red and drag it in that white. So I'm going to turn my guy around here. So I can go this angle easier. It's easier for me to paint this way towards me. I'm just dragging my brush using that straight edge of the, the corner, the side of my brush as my guide. Just like so. All right, now to get in this area, I'm going to use an even smaller brush. Oh, let's see, what have I got? I've got this filbert here. It looks, this is a filbert, it's round tip. Filbert means it's just rounded at the bottom. It's a little bit smaller, and it will help me kind of get in here. You see what I did, right? <laughs> I almost stuck my hand in that, and I could feel it damp, so. It's still drying. The body's still drying. Like I said, if you paint yours white and your white is crisp and you don't see your wood through your white, you don't have to do this part. It's already white for you. Um, And your line doesn't have to be super smooth and perfect because you're going to hit it with a paint pen at the end. So there we go. All right, I'm going to rinse that little brush out. I'm going to go ahead and paint the tip of the tail white and do my edges here. Sometimes when you lift up with your brush, you may have a little bit of thickness along the top. Just go over it one more time to smooth that out. You don't want what I call goop drops on the top. And then I'm going to go straight across here, just like so. All right. Now, I'll turn my guy one more time. And now we're going to do the same thing down here. Just going to cover this white area. And you can use an angle brush to get in here if you want, or you just use your flat tip. Just pull out from the corner. It's easier if you pull away from the corner than try to get up in the corner.
Look over that just a hair. I just want this to be good and white. Right? You could add some beige in here now that I'm thinking through it and give it, um, make it look a little dingy, kind of like it's been loved a lot. Um, my kids have, my kids, all three of my kids still have stuffed animals. Um, they just, they, I guess they inherited that from me. They know who gave them what, when they got them. And um, so they each have sentimental value. And some of them have been well loved. Well loved. Just like dingy, they're dirty. Funny, one of my children liked stuffed animals okay and still has some, but they weren't nearly as sentimental as his blankie. That blankie was just his little, he was just, we always called him our little Linus. It was his security blanket for sure. He still has his blankie. Um, It just doesn't go on spend the night parties or anything like that anymore. I guess they don't spend the night. They don't have to spend the night parties anymore at this age. And they have people sleep over, hanging out, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I miss those blanky days. He would sit at the washing machine. Sometimes I just have to say, son, it has to be washed. It's nasty. He would sit at the washing machine or at the dryer and just wait for it to be done. I was like, bless it. All right. So we almost got our white coverage on. And see, this guy is really quick to paint. It doesn't take too long at all. Super simple. All right, so now we're going to, I'm going to hit him with a hair dryer. That way we can um, get him done super quick and we can start working on his heart and his eyes and that um, outline. So bear with me just a minute while I get him dry. Okay, so this one little piece here, I went over just a hair, and the OCD in me, that's just going to bug the snot out of me. So I'm painting over this real quick, and then I'll dry it too, okay? It just kind of stuck out there like a sore thumb. So, now you and I both can sleep better knowing that's taken care of. Let me finish drying. We're going to put our um, template back on, on the top with our carbon paper underneath. 
and we'll go ahead and draw in his eyes. I'm going to go ahead and trace out his eyes here. Here and here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and lightly trace this eyebrow here just because I'm going to hit that with a paint pen. I'm going to trace over that with my paint pen. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm touching this with paint. That's where that white's coming from. It's on my fingers. All right. Let me do, let me get this off. Causing trouble. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, kind of trace in his nostrils here. I'm going to lightly put to draw that with the paint pen okay so now you can see I'm adding details right I'm going to go ahead and draw in this portion of his ear because that's going to be right here so I'm just tracing in that and I'm going to move my carbon paper over here and do the same thing on this side Come in here. If you want to draw in the lines on the ears, you can. I'm going to add that later. Um, and I'm going to come down here. Let me take this out and put it in this way. Making sure my template's lined up each time. I'm going to go ahead and draw in my heart. Okay, and it's not going to hurt to go ahead and draw in the lines on his hands and feet. So to do that, and um, my brown, this part is brown, this part is white. So I'm only drawing in the part that I need to go over with the paint pen, just to kind of show me where those lines go. Okay, so I'm going to do that here. I'm going to do that here, and I'm also going to go ahead and trace out this foot because even though this part here is brown, this part here is not, so I need to know where it starts. And as you pick up your template, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. All right, and then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing on this side. I'm going to separate this portion out. Draw my line down his foot, and then draw this line, and, huh, leg, all right, we got to fix that, otherwise he's going to look goofy, all right, so let's do that. So see right here, I should have painted that brown like this side, but I didn't draw that out. So that's all right. We'll fix that. It's easy to fix. We're just going to go ahead and get brown on there so it can start drawing. And then we'll come back up and put his eyes in. So I still have some of this, um, what did I call it? Mushroom champagne folk art. I'll turn this this way. It doesn't really matter if I go over it. It's on. It's going to blend together beautifully when it dries. I'm surprised I missed that. I'm painting it all today <laughs> but that's what maps are for right 
So, let's see. It's a little thick on that edge. So, I'm just going to kind of wipe across it like that. It's a cheat. I'm wiping into the paint. If it gets a little thick on my edge, I can keep trying to smooth it out with the paintbrush or I can just touch it with my finger. It all does the same thing. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'll get a second coat on that so the white don't show through. So you can't see the difference in color. All right. While that is drying, get that edge. While that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and paint this heart. Now, before I paint my heart um, red, because it's on a dark color, I'm going to paint it white. And the reason that I do that is because if I put it this brown, it's just going to look dull and washed out. But if I go ahead and put just a light coat of white, even if you see a little bit of brown underneath the white, then um, it's really going to make that red brighter. So I always recommend if you're going to put a lighter color on a dark color, always use white to, um, always use white underneath to make that color. Okay. I'm going to get in the corner of the heart, pull it straight out on both sides. And if you see your graphite lines, it's okay. Even under the red, we're going to outline that in black. So you're not going to see it when we're done. Make sure I'm not putting my hand in anything wet. And I'm turning my work as I go because it's just easier to do that. I used to think I was the only one. I was so relieved to find out I'm not. Turn your work. Make it work for you. All right, so I've got my white heart in place. I'm going to let that dry for just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and work on the eyes. So for the eyes, I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush just because it's easier. And I'm going to use Anita's. Uh, it's just plain all black. Don't need much of it. I'm just going to paint in his eyes. Now, when you're buying acrylic paint, if you're not familiar with acrylic paint, there's different kinds. There's the matte finish, and then there's gloss. You have metallics. There's all sorts of kind, uh, all sorts of variety of paint. Um, everything that I paint with, well, 99% of what I paint with is flat matte acrylic. Um, it's not the gloss, um, semi-gloss or shiny. Um, I save those for special projects. Um, but I just use the matte finish on most, of every, most everything I do. Unless I want it to sparkle. Okay, so we got one eye in. Let's do the other. Turn this guy around here so I can turn my brush smoothly. And just like the mouth, if your eye gets a little too wide, don't try to keep correcting it with the black. Let it dry and use your, use your brown or your white to fix the area around it. If you, um, if you keep trying to um, smooth out the black, come on, autofocus, get with me. 
if you keep trying to smooth out the black and get it, it you'll just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then you have crazy eyes and there's nothing wrong with crazy eyes if you're making them for Halloween all right so we got his eyes in there rinse that out real good oh why did I do that I'll use a smaller brush I'm going to use, now I'm going to use my teeny tiny filbert for his nostrils. And I'm using the same black. And I'm just going to paint these in here like so. There we go. All right. Rinse that brush out. Now, let's get his ears painted, and then we'll come back to the heart. Okay? So, again, I'm going to use my filbert brush. And if you don't have all these brushes, you don't have to have this, this particular kind of brush. Just get a variety of sizes. And for the ears, the inner ears here, I'm going to use this... Um, it's taupe gray. It's Anita's also called taupe gray. And it just, to me, it looks more like a khaki. It works with this dark brown. I'm just going to fill in the ear here that I drew in from my template. I'm still using the straight tip of this brush as my edge and making it do the work of keeping a straight line so I don't have to. Make sure I got you in screen here. And this again, it's a little bit lighter color, obviously, going on a darker color. And this, I'm not, I'm not so concerned about the dark um, underneath because it, it needs to be muted a little bit. So it really won't make a difference on this particular color. So don't worry about it. You don't have to paint it white first. If you want to, you can. Um, I've noticed it doesn't really make a difference. And if there's a little bit of dark underneath, it just kind of gives it um, a more realistic look. We'll do the same thing with this ear here. Looks like the sun's coming out. We have had a lot of rain this summer. I think it's rained more than it hasn't. Alright, let's see here. Oh, a little too much. I want that side to be straight, a little straighter. There we go. And if you want to put a second coat on that, you can. I like the way this guy looks, so I'm going to leave it alone. All right. Now, now we're going to come back to the little heart here. My cute little monkey heart. All right. I'm going to go back into the true red again. Paint it red. And because this red is so um, bright, 
My red always needs a second coat. But you can see how bright it is on top of that white. Drag around. If you go over the edge a little bit, don't worry about it. You're going to outline this. You won't see it. See how bright his heart looks? Okay. Going up, and I don't want to start. I never start right on the edge. I don't know if you noticed that, but I try not to ever start right on the edge. I try to go in um, and work my way out, especially in this in these small things, these small like the heart and you know um, the bigger areas. It's easier to do that, but um, on the smaller things, I like to start on the inside a little bit and work my way to the outside. Okay. So I'm going to let that dry for just a second while I put my second coat of brown here because I don't want to forget that. I want that leg to blend in and not look like it's been added on later. Ooh, that's way too much. Covering up this white. And I'm pulling out from my corner. There we go. I think I touched right there with my white on my arm earlier. Okay. Now, let me throw that in here to rinse that off. And let me see, what am I missing? I know we need another coat here before we start our outlining. So I'm going to hit this with the hair dryer just to make sure it's good and dry because I really don't want to just move the paint around. So hold on just a sec. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and put the second coat on real quick. There we go. Now, his heart is finished. Well, it's not finished, but it's almost finished. So I've done a couple of paint parties with this monkey, and I've seen him done different ways. I've seen people do, like, the buffalo plaid for his heart. They've done, um, some people have just left it uh, solid red. Um, a friend of mine whose daughter had a heart transplant did her special so that it matched um, the hearts at the hospital that they got. So um, for me, I'm going to add polka dots because I love polka dots. So I'm going to dry this real quick and then we're going to put our polka dots on. sure that's really good and dry okay now I'm going to use the old trick of the q-tip I'm actually going to make sure that the end is smooth okay you don't want one that's wiry and crazy and I'm just going to stick it in my white paint and what I typically like to do let's see if I have a, something I can sample on I'm going to use this tin foil here I just want to take and go straight down and I'm just making a polka dot um, and I don't know if you can see that on the um, Tin foil. I wish I had a piece of spare wood here to show you, but um, I've got several Q-tips in case this one starts getting crazy. 
and I'm just going to do polka dots. So I'm going to do one. I'm going to do them in threes. So I do one, two, three, and that kind of helps me with spacing. If you think about it in the form of a triangle, one, two, three. So now I got one, two, three, and it just kind of helps you with your spacing, okay? So that it doesn't look quite uniform. It's not quite uniform, but at the same time, it's not. Um, what's the right word? Uh, Just full crazy polka dots. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I just count as I go. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, uh, one, two, three. Let's put one here. And if your tip starts getting a little wide, go ahead and um, flip it over. I always keep a couple handy. I try. I used to do this with the uh, end of the paintbrush. You can do it that way also, but I found it wasn't uniform enough, and so um, I just kind of like doing it like this. See, it's so cute. One, two, three. You can always go back over them. If you want one that looks like it's coming off the edge, um, you can do that as well. What I typically do is put down um, a piece of painter's tape along the edge, and then you can have them coming off the edge. For this guy, I'm not going to do that. Um, especially when you're working on bigger projects, it, come, it, it just gives it a more realistic view. Okay. Uh, let's see. We'll let that dry, and I think I'm trying to think what I'm missing. Make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, let me look at my original here. I think he's almost done, except for our outlines and our highlights. We do need to add his little eyes on. So I'm gonna, I am gonna use a paintbrush for that. One of my bigger paintbrushes, and I'm just gonna take the end of that paintbrush and stick it in my paint like so. And I'm just going to put the dot right where I would want his eye to go. And I'm just going to kind of circle it in. If you like the dot the size that it is, just leave it. But I want mine just a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to make the circle with my paintbrush. Okay? So if your if your white gets a little too if it gets away from you, you can always go back and paint around that black or paint the black around it and make it a little bit smaller, and that will work out. All right. So now we're at the highlighting stage. So we're gonna start up at the top. I'm gonna give that heart and those eyes a few minutes to dry, and I'm gonna start at the top. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go slide on the inside as I'm outlining my guy. Let me move this back some. Anybody else feel like their uh, paints are surrounding them like an army sometimes? All right, let's see. I'm going to come around here and then here. I'm going to cross over right where my white and my red meet. Okay. And then I'm going to stay on the inside. I'm just on the inside of my wood. I'm not right on the edge because if you're right on the edge, you're going to fall off the edge. Just come right on the inside. And I'm just outlining my guy here. So I'm going to come back up here, and here, I'm trying to make sure I don't stick my hand in the eye. You probably want to wait until yours is dry. I'm outlining the hat like so, okay? And this is where you want to make sure that as you're painting the, uh, or as you're drawing your lines here, that you do not run your hand through this wet paint pen. It's not nearly as forgiving as acrylic paint. So if you smear it, um, 
it's just harder to cover up, honestly. So make sure that you um, make sure that you don't run your you're, you're working so that you don't run your hand over it as you're working down your monkey. Okay. And this is where he'll really start to come alive. So I'm going to come around here like so. And I'm just on the inside. All right. I'm, and by being just on the inside, you're also giving him a more whimsical look. So. If you're a hand shaky, so, uh, like today, I'm dealing, my hand's a little more shaky. I think it's lack of sleep. But I'm just going to use my arm on straight lines and not my hand, my wrist as much. Keeping that smooth. Like so. Okay. I'm going to outline his ear. Where the two colors come together. And for this, I'm right on top of the line. This is where if you go over a little bit, you get to hide that imperfection. Okay. Go around here. This is my favorite part of every door hanger is when I start getting to do the outlines and the highlights. Yes, I did just stick my hand in my heart, so hang on. <laughs> uh. I have a love-hate relationship. All right. I might need another wet wipe. So, now I'm going to go ahead and draw on his eyebrows. So, I'm going to come through here. I'm still trying not to touch the... Um, the paint pen that's already wet or the wet paint on his eye there and I'm going to go ahead and outline his face and I'm going to outline his eye you probably would think well why are you doing that it's already black this paint pen is a little bit shinier so you'll be able to it'll really make it stand out Okay. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and finish up his mouth here. And Just like so. And I'm going to do the inside as well. Making sure not to go over my wet paint that I just drew on the outside. Okay. This is always my favorite part because that's I think this is what really makes it come alive it really character all right so I can't see my line on his mouth that good but I think it starts right here look how cute see how he comes together we're gonna come through here draw it around his body I'm going to start up here at the tail and work my way down. I ran off the edge a little bit there, but that's okay. No one's going to notice that. I'm going to do the same thing right here. Actually, I'm going to turn it. If I turn it, I'll have a, a much smoother line. And I did cross this here. All right. 
I'm going to come down this side over here. Again, just on the inside. And this is where I should have his arms drawn, and I did not do that. So now we play a tricky game of putting this down on wet, but I think it'll be okay. Let me make sure this is dry. That looks pretty dry. I'm going to put this just on the inside and just barely lay this on here. That paint pen dries pretty quick. I'm not going to put a lot of pressure though because I really don't want to I don't want to mess this up. But what I should have done is drawn this line here to show me where it goes. And I did not. But now I have it. So, and I'm also going to draw in this leg here. Because I'm going to be outlining this in black. And I want to know exactly where it goes. So let me do this side also. If you're painting along watching this and you've gotten to this point, just let that paint pen dry a minute before you draw these on. You can hit it with a hair dryer. Hopefully, maybe you caught that before I did. All right. That way, when I outline it, it looks like his body. So I'm going to draw this line straight down here. It's the one that I just traced on, just like so. Okay. See why that's important? <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to come in here, and we're going to outline his hand here. I'm going to outline here along his hand. I'm going to outline his foot. And this part, drawn straight down, just on top of my graphite line. Okay? And then for the edge, again, I'm still staying just on the inside to kind of give it depth. And for his foot, I'm just going to trace around the inside of the circle here. Can you see that? Just in here. And this is where his foot comes on around. His leg comes on around here. And then I want to make sure I draw this seam line for his foot. And I'm stopping that just inside the circle. Okay. Oh, I did exactly what I told you not to do. I hit the um, paint pen in my haste of trying to be quick. So if you do that, you I want you to know that you can paint. I mean, you might not even be able to pick it up. I can see it just a little bit of smear there. I'm going to go ahead and paint over that later. I'll get right up against that edge and smooth that line out. It's not, it's not really convenient, but sometimes it happens. Okay. Let's just be real. All right. I'm going to stop right there on this side outlining so that I can do the heart. Because I want to outline the heart where I don't have to worry about anything wet. And then I'm going to come around this side. Here. And now I'm going to add my stitches. Your template, your stitches on there. I'm just going to draw them in. You're welcome to freehand if you're not comfortable doing that. But I'm just drawing the stitching. I want to make sure that I'm staying with the angle. So if my heart's going this way, I'm going that way. If my heart's going this way, I'm turning my stitches to go at the same angle. Okay. See how cute? All right. Now let's go ahead and finish this guy up. We have his 
can see. His arm's coming down here. And I'm dragging my arm straight down to keep that line straight till we get to here. I'm going to cross over. Come down around here. I'm going to come. I'm going to go ahead and do this inside piece. It's easier if I do the inside piece and then do the outside. Like so. Okay, and my wood's a little rough there, so I'm going to go over that a couple times. And that's just where I didn't sand it well. I do cut out all my own templates. So we are looking into possibly being able to offer that to you soon. If that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments. Where we cut out your blank, and you just go buy your paints, and then you can buy the template, and you can paint it. Let's see. Trace on my leg here. My paint pen wants to die. Don't All right. Come around here. And then finish up this foot. So, all right, and then of course our tail ends here. So I want this arm to go. I'm going to take this arms here. Can you see where I'm going? And I'm just going to draw it straight down to match up here. I want to line it right here. Okay. Now, now, now our sock monkey is. Make sure. He's got all his pieces. He's all outlined. Now we're going to take our white highlight pen. And this is a, I used the Posca white paint pen, five millimeter. And we're just going to add some white highlights. And this is quick and easy. Um, in fact, let me do this real quick. Because I'm looking at my original and I realize I forgot my little lines here on his hat. And is there anything else I missed? Nope. All right, so now we're going to go and just do a couple of highlights here. So I'm going to do one here, and I'm going to do one here, and here, just a little bit, just to make that, that red pop. I'm going to come around here and do a little bit on his ear. I'll do one over here on this ear. I want a little bit on his arm, um, down here, okay, we're going to put a little bit on his tail, and then we'll put a couple on his legs, and I think he'll be all finished up. And there's really when I'm doing highlights, there's no rhyme or reason. I just kind of put it where I feel like it might. Um, it's just to add a little bit of brightness to it. It gives it the whimsical look. It really makes it pop. And um, a little bit of that goes a long way. So here is our finished shop monkey. I wonder if I can lift this up just a little bit so you can kind of see the whole guy. But no. Huge. This one is huge. Um, mine is. The template is a little bit that you purchase is a little bit smaller. This guy, like I said, he's for a project. So I hope you enjoyed it today, painting our sock monkey. I hope you found it helpful. I'd love to see what you're painting, whether it's the sock monkey or something else. Um, jump on our Facebook group, community group, and share with uh, share pictures of what you're working on. You never know who you might inspire. They'll be like, oh, that's so cool. So um, thanks for joining us today, and we will see you next time. 
Uh, next week, we're going to be working on some fall things. So I hope you'll join me. Y'all have a good weekend. Bye.